Hey, what's up? It's alchemist.camp, where usually we learn Elixir by building things, but today I have a question. It's from username ATO26 on Indie Hackers, and he asks, you mentioned chat and WebSockets were a problem in Rails. I heard DHH and other members of the Rails community claim that Rails 5 mitigated those problems. What has your experience been like with using Rails 5 for those? Okay. First of all, I'm not completely sure what this is in reference to. I don't think I've said that chat and WebSockets are a problem in Rails, but what I would say is if you're making an MVP for some sort of web app, and especially if you've got a small team or you're just working on your own, Rails is usually going to be the quickest way to get there, unless that MVP needs chat or WebSockets. And some people, def definitely a lot of people, have left Rails and chosen other stacks like Node or, or more recently Go or Elixir because of dealing with concurrency. And chat is one of those things where you've got not a, not a great deal of data, but a lot of events. And Ruby, actually not Rails, but just Ruby was not built with concurrency in mind. So you'll end up working with something external like say Redis or socket.io or Fay, and that's fine. You know, you can build your app that way. It adds a bit of complexity and in the end, performance is usually not going to be as good as it would be with something like Elixir. And that's because Elixir and really Erlang was built from the ground up with concurrency in mind. And you've got things like OTP processes built into the Erlang virtual machine. So as you know, the famous Chris McCord video has shown, you can get uh, literally like 2 million people in a chat room on one server with Elixir. Now it was, it was a beefy server and it was a simple app, but still that shows in a very powerful way what kind of performance you can get with Elixir. None of this is why I would, I would actually go with Elixir over Rails for uh, an MVP or something that involves chat. The reason I would is actually Phoenix presence. It's really hard to get presence right. Like if you have users that uh, might be connecting with multiple devices, you want to show if they're online or not, then maybe they, you know, they connected with two devices and then they disconnected with one. If you don't get it right, you'll have a, a kind of messed up present versus away status for your users. And that might not be something that matters for MVP, but Every time I've seen people work on it, like they do actually care if it's buggy. And even for their MVP, they wanna, they wanna get it mostly right. And they think it's gonna be really easy. And then they spend more and more time dealing with edge cases. And eventually they spent a lot more time than if they had just gone with something that had solved the problem for them. So that's kind of a, a unique advantage that Phoenix has in addition to all of the, the great things about Erlang and Elixir and dealing with concurrency. Okay, so on the point of Rails 5 specifically, I would say there are a few things to keep in mind. First is DHH is going to be hugely biased because Rails is his baby, like he's the Rails guy. Of course he's going to say that things are better. He's basically never, at least I can't think of a time where he's, he's really been talking down Rails and, and I don't see why he ever would. Secondly, his specific claims are true. And you can watch him make an app that uses WebSockets with Rails. And I believe it's the primary marketing video for Rails 5. He uses Action Cable. He uses what's, I guess, now the, you know, part of the, the Rails 5 workflow and makes an app really quickly. And it does, you know, the kinds of stuff that you would want for a chat room. That said, it's still using Redis, like Ruby is not handling the evented stuff. And uh, it's not, you know, it's not at all like it would be with, with Elixir or Erlang where you have OTP and lightweight processes built in to the virtual machine, but it is an improvement. And again, I would say for a new app, the reason for a Rails dev to consider Phoenix would not be because of scaling and performance. New apps generally don't have problems keeping up with the technical demands of scaling to the number of their users. New apps usually have a problem of not having any users 
and it would be a great problem to have too many users. So I would say the reason you would consider Elixir and Phoenix for a new app wouldn't be the scalability, it would be uh, the Phoenix channels and Phoenix presence. For a larger company to leave Rails and choose Elixir, then it would be all about the, the scalability and the fault tolerance, or maybe the ease of debugging. There are a lot of cases where functional pattern matching makes it easier to make a robust app. And actually just the functional nature of Elixir in general makes testing a lot simpler. You often don't have to know as much to know why something is broken because you're not dealing with an object-oriented language with a model that has inherited from other things and is storing all kinds of state that may have been changed by things all over your app. Instead, you're mostly just dealing with pure functions where you have the same output for the same input every single time. And you can look at the, uh, the web request response cycle the same way. Like if you have the same structure in your plug, you render or you do the same thing pretty much every time. Now, obviously there can be some rough cases still because you do have, you know, you can't get rid of state completely. You can't get rid of side effects completely. You still have user input and you still deal with the database, at least usually. But those side effects are a lot more cordoned off if you're dealing with a functional language. And the fact that Elixir is immutable just adds to that. So, so this is kind of a side tangent, but I found that the debugging experience with Elixir is kind of in between what it would be like for a truly type safe language, like say Elm or Scala, and what it would be like for a weekly dynamically typed language like JavaScript. Uh, it's certainly not the situation where as soon as something compiles, I am sure that it will work and that it's correct, but errors are a lot less common and easier to track down than I found they were working with Ruby or especially JavaScript. So there you have it. Rails is a perfectly fine tool and it's actually an excellent tool for getting things out of the gate quickly. Elixir and Phoenix are also highly productive, maybe not quite to where Rails is yet, but there are some special advantages for dealing with chat or presence or anything that has more of a real-time feel than a traditional web app. And I would totally recommend that if you are a Ruby on Rails developer, you should subscribe to this channel, check out Elixir, build a few things with it, and draw your own conclusions. Like, you will probably miss a lot of things that you're used to with Rails, and you'll definitely miss the ecosystem. But you may find some things that uh, you like a bit more as well. Until next time, code on.